The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David Witt. And welcome all to another exciting edition of Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got a market up about six and a half points on the S&P cash, about 154 on the Dow, up 32 on the NASDAQ. Russell's up nine. Um, to me, the thing that you've got to be looking at is not only the dollar, uh, I mean the uh, share volume, but the dollar volume. Uh, it is puny, puny, weak, weak, weak. Uh, and uh, the volume right now, just turning 3 point, and I was call it 3.3 billion shares for the day. Uh, up to one o'clock, uh, lightest day in the last two years of a full trading day. So there has been no energy in these pushes higher for the last few days. In fact, extremely light volume. Of course, we start getting earnings in later next week. Um, I had a question just as we started the show that asked me, uh, what I'm thinking about uh, earnings per share in the uh, 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 banks and tax. Um, I don't think there's a great deal up or down in most of these companies uh, on the actual earnings. It's all about what they forecast. Uh, there were a lot of stocks uh, last uh, cycle uh, that had rather poor earnings cycle but gave good forecasts. A lot of them had good forecast, uh, had uh, good earnings, uh, and poor forecast, and it was more of the forecast than anything else. Uh, to, to, to do, let's go to the first one here, which I want to think about uh, because uh, they actually gave really a nasty forecast, uh, ADBE, Adobe, and it all mattered for about one day, and they went. This started going back up. Now, they've had one decent day of volume back on the 20th, and that's it. And a great deal of these companies, that's exactly what these charts all look like. Uh, did they have volume at the highs? Well, it was about what the previous high was. So is it a ringing endorsement? No. Has the last five or eight days been literally uh, starved for volume? Narrow trading ranges, sideways trading ranges, generally a good indication that highs, if you go sideways and the volume's light, it's distribution. If you uh, get up to the highs with lots of volume and it's pushing higher, uh, more people are buying the buy, uh, the uh, breakout. Uh, not seeing uh, that in a great deal of what I'm uh, looking at. In fact, we'll look at some more charts later on in the show. Uh, but uh, you know what? Just, uh, I mean, incredibly, incredibly light volume. Does it mean that we can't crawl up a little bit more? It could. Uh, but uh, I'm saying there's probably a 50% chance of, you know, 10, 15 points higher in the S&P uh, and an equal 50% chance that you see uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks a 100 points lower. So the risk reward is pretty horrible up at this point. And it just gets worse with the lack of volume. Generally, they say, do not be uh, short a quiet market. And I would say that except at very much at highs. Now, maybe they know something about the trade deal that we do not know. Handful of people keep pushing the market. I suspect that uh, everybody's just sitting around uh, with a straw, a piece of straw, throwing it on a camel's back, just asking, when is it going to break? Um, is there a lot of downside problems? No, but at the same time, everybody's seen this big move. They're not about to buy it at the highs. You nearly or almost always need some kind of retrace. So people at least think that they're getting a good deal, that they didn't pay top 
dollar and then the stock market collapsed on them. And right now, there is just nobody or very few people willing to throw money at this market at the very highs. So, yeah, I, I don't think it has much of anything to do uh, with earnings going forward. It's all about what they're going to say uh, going forward. And then even then, it will probably be ignored. So I don't know what else you can say other than that. Sometimes they believe people. If uh, they're out there singing the roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. Let the, well, anyway, some people may know that song. Uh, but that's it. But we haven't had any volume now for a couple of weeks. Uh, we've had some big moves and occasional short squeezes. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, uh, especially uh, I wrote in the Tech Insider today the issues that I have with the SMHs. Uh, but that's it. Uh, what are we? We've got a few minutes here. Let's go ahead and do uh, some history, and then we'll get into the rest of the show. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1979, it was a glorious day. It was a day that kissed the earth. Disco was killed by a public backlash that reached its peak on this day in 1979 with the infamous Disco Demolition Night at Chicago's Kaminsky Park. That incident, which led to at least nine injuries, 39 arrests, and the cancellation and forfeit of a Major League Baseball game is widely credited, or depending on your perspective, blamed with dealing Disco its death blow. The event was a brainchild of Steve Dahl and uh, Gary Miner, a couple of shock jocks, uh, one of which had uh, his uh, station had just, of course, like most management, waited for the absolute top of the market to switch to an all-disco format. Uh, the doll was the one that originally moved from WLUP, rival station from WDAI, when the station switched to its all-disco format. And, of course, uh, at least, I don't think, Music really recovered till maybe 1986 or maybe 87. There were some bright spots in it, but for the most part, a plague was uh, released on the airwaves of America, and uh, at least the uh, tide started to get turned today in 1979. As most people know, I love music, and disco was an anathema uh, to that. The cotton candy of music, in my opinion. But uh, that is a day that will live not in infamy, but in glory. Okay, what else do we have? Um, go back here and look real quick. Uh, dollar index, it's down about 20 cents, uh, $96.47. Uh, no, excuse me, uh, $96, yeah, 47 cents. Uh, when we look at the rest of it, like I said, the market volume is just barely moving. 3.3 uh, 3 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, and, of course, uh, even with uh, all the yelling and screaming of uh, impending doom for, uh, uh, for uh, the Gulf, uh, when we look at uh, crude, where's that at? Oh, there it is. It's up uh, four cents. So not that much going on. Gold up $8.50. Uh, silver up 10 cents. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, yes, we're opining in the uh, Tiger's Den about uh, how I have to listen to a almost an hour of Dave Matthews' band to get sane again after a chance encounter with disco. And of course, uh, nothing better than his seven, eight time songs uh, that I don't, how many people can still play in seven, eight time and do it well? I, and maybe he's the last one, unless you go to like a concert pianist somewhere. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, nothing more to get a disco song out of your head than seven, eight time. Uh, themed songs. Uh, do, 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 okay. Um, okay. See anything else out here? We'll go back, take a quick look. 3,007 on the S&P cash, but again, no real juice. See if there's anything else going. Uh, as uh, John from Philadelphia and the Tiger's Den brought up, the Anheuser-Busch um, Budweiser Asia IPO is officially uh, kaput. That's a Russian word, I think. Uh, and uh, it's, I think it's been kind of signaled for the last few days uh, that it was going nowhere fast. Uh, always a kind of an interesting idea to take a brand that's an American brand and then have it bought by yet another company. Uh, and see, you got down to $85.25 so far today, and it's bounced up a little bit. Um, I just never understood taking a uh, a brand that had a had the flag on the label and pushing it that way. Uh, but of course, uh, I'm not a beer drinker. It's uh, not a big deal to me. But uh, I'm always as have been in love with one of the uh, former Bud Girls, uh, Luann Tweeden. If you ever look her up, um, in my racing days, she used to run around the uh, paddock uh, racing, and I thought she was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, big movers today, ILMN. A uh, fell off the cliff today. And uh, do, 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 what does see? Did we get the news on that? Just blew apart. 
But this is kind of uh, what I suspect a lot of these uh, stocks look like right now. We've been bringing it up. Um, I was looking at it. I didn't see a lot fundamentally with the company that's wrong. Uh, but we've been talking about the double repo pattern. And this is what kind of the entire market looks like. I'm not expecting the uh, death of uh, Illumina as bad as we've seen it here. I-L-U-M-I-L-M-N, uh, Illumina. Let me get that back up. Uh, okay. And to see. Okay, let me read the article here. Um, it's tanking today down 16% at 10.30 after the genomic sequence leader announced preliminary results for its second quarter on Thursday. Uh, Luma said that it expected to report uh, $835 million, uh, which is $50 million lower than Wall Street analyst anticipated. And, of course, uh, nothing like uh, seeing revenue numbers dip because those are the hardest ones to phony. Uh, the company also updated its full year 2019 guidance. Uh, now projects revenue growth around 6%, less than half of its previous forecast uh, at the beginning of this year, between 13 and 14%. Um, pretty hefty price. Uh, this thing has done nothing but go to the moon. Uh, I think that there's a good business, core business here, uh, it's just ridiculously priced. Didn't quite make it down to the $300.35 low on May 20th. Uh, but I think that there are a lot of tech companies out here that uh, could do a similar pattern. And again, we've been talking about this double repo pattern at highs uh, or ballistic markets. I like it a lot better than a parabolic SAR and some of the others. Uh, but what you want to look for is... Uh, a, you know, 10, 15 days, sometimes longer. In this case, uh, you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You had 25 days basically going above uh, a trending, uh, uh, uptrend, either uh, three-day displaced moving average or that pattern. You got the close again yesterday below it. Uh, the gap down would have been the trigger to pull uh, t to, uh, yesterday. But of course, you were going into earnings. Who wants to get in front of a, a buzzsaw of biotech that can go either way? Uh, you had a fairly good one, but this is kind of what a great deal of the market actually looks like right now. Um, I was actually going through these, so we'll just go through them as fast, but these are uh, possible double repo patterns that I was scanning for. Uh, and uh, some of them are and some of them aren't. Uh, Adobe is one I'm watching very closely for yet another close under a three by three. This thing, uh, as we said to begin with, uh, gave poor guidance forward. Market ignored it and started pushing it up anyway. And I wonder if uh, this isn't when the uh, chickens will come home to roost. Uh, do, 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 what else do we have out here? Uh, do, do, do. Akamai. Um, this is going back into a huge uh, gap that instantly got filled. This goes back to May 1st. Got up to 86.19 on 4.6 million shares. Uh, going back into the base of that now, uh, today, which is 270,000 shares. So when we're talking about light, light volume, if there are anybody stuck up there, uh, it's going to take forever with this kind of volume to chew through it. So uh, I do think that uh, either being in cash or being short is probably the wisest thing to be right now. Altera, another one of these stocks that had been on a one-way ride uh, since the low of June 5th. Uh, that was at 33.70. You're getting a close below uh, the uh, three by three today on very light volume. And I think you've got problematic issues in all of the SMHs. Uh, and I wrote about that today in the Tech Insider. One of the reasons uh, I decided to get out of our long positions yesterday is I suspect that this will kind of infect it. Uh, AMD is on the war path, uh, and that war path is going to mean diminishing um, 
uh, margins for probably both NVIDIA and Intel. And with all three of those uh, problematically being uh, hit, it's going to very be a very tough ride on the SMHs. Um, as we said, uh, or what we were pointing out earlier, uh, I think yesterday, uh, advanced micro devices already tested the $34.30 .30 high of June 10th uh, with about 27 cents shy, but uh, only two thirds of the volume on the uh, left. Uh, we're back in there. It still hasn't cracked on that right uh, shoulder set up by the three by three or a nine day moving average, but it's close. A couple more days that closes below it. I suspect you're gonna be back down in the 28th fairly quick. We'll be back in Washington. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back uh, looking at a few stocks. A lot of these have some trend lines on the way up. Just no volume like Amberilla. Um, let's see, uh, look at the retracements here. Um, Amberilla is back up, got to its uh, uh, 618 retracement. That was $46.22. Uh, you got to $46.36. But, I mean, this thing hasn't had any volume. Uh, last day was on the 5th of June. So just nothing. Uh, and sometimes described as pushing on a string. Maybe you get a little bit of action, but that's about it. Let's take a look at Avid. 
Um, I'm not, you know, not a good stock to short because it's been in this trading range, but a longer trading range is fairly good. Uh, same kind of thing, not much energy on the way higher. Let's turn a few of these off so they look a little clearer. Um, you've got the kind of the first signs in a lot of these uh, that they are getting ready to do a double repo pattern through next week. Um, this credit corp BAP symbol, uh, you want a couple of days above the three by three and then the next turn down uh, would be highly problematic. You want if you're eh, mostly if you're trying to get this one um, correct, you want it to go above that and then the next close below it. Um, a lot of times you will just find that these things fall directly out of bed when they do do that. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Well, Mike, somebody in the den saying that they had a friend that worked for Avid. Um, we were kind of a small company making huge margins, uh, and the uh, CEO decided he wanted to get into that business. And uh, I sold almost all the shares that, of the company I had. <laughs> Needless to say, they did not like me much anymore. And, of course, uh, two years after that, they sold f out for a fourth of what I sold my shares for. But uh, yeah, little companies shouldn't pick on big companies. Uh, best Buy. Um, this is coming into its April 24th high. So uh, $75.91, 2.4 million shares. Uh, you're just shy of that by 50 cents with 1.4 million shares today. And generally, this is when these companies pull back fairly significantly until there's a product to buy for a Christmas uh, present. I'm unsure why this thing is rallying on very light energy out here. But this may be, generally, you get a good uh, mid-July to 1st of August to first couple of weeks of September of a down move in consumer electronics why everybody's trying to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, let's see what else we have in our list of things out here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see what uh, Delta Airlines is doing going into earnings next week. Uh, it's through its previous two highs around this 61 and $60 level. Um, 11 million shares, 12 million shares. Uh, today you're rocketing through it with uh, – 6.8 million shares so far. So again, uh, just whatever shorts there are out there are getting squeezed into the front of earnings. Uh, question about 3D systems in the mail too. So we'll do that. Uh, two, two, two. Um, again, pretty wide trading range in this thing. Got down to $6.36. This may be a washout. Uh, they've got a brand new centered uh, metal printer that is supposed to be extremely hot. Uh, and everybody's in the industry saying a lot about it. Um, I wonder if they weren't attacked to wash out the weak hands today. We'll see how this trades in the next couple of days. Uh, but uh, I'm starting to think that there's a lot more to these 3D companies uh, in the near future. Stratasys... Uh, had a huge day. Um, a lot of these companies are massively shorted in 3D printing space. Um, it's kind of hanging up here, which is kind of amazing. I didn't think it would hang up here this long, uh, but a little bit of a pullback. You want to be able to see if you could buy this back at 26 bucks for 3D systems. Uh, EGO. Again, uh, these stocks uh, as I said uh, yesterday to the caller who was uh, looking to go short in dust, um, I didn't see, I, I like the patterns in these. There's going to be a fairly sharp and, and quick pullback when these do turn. Uh, but uh, as far as I can tell you right now, there is no signal up here that says you should uh, be froggy and start jumping after these. Uh, no volume on the way back up. What you want this thing to do is close below. Uh, three by three displaced moving average, close back above it, and the next close below it, pull the trigger. Uh, t -t 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 what else do we have? Uh, Finistar, F N 
SR. Um, a lot of these stocks just barely keeping an uptrend going and j literally vacuum for volume. Uh, Fennis Star got up to 2404, uh, came back down. It's been going sideways for a little while. This one looks like it could easily get back to $20.75. Um, for those stocks uh, in the uh, liquefied natural gas business, uh, you've had kind of a little bounce off these lows, in this case, the June 14th low at $12.94. You got up to $14.93. Uh, got a little doji at here. This does not look like it's an improving business. I still think this business will be good one day, but not so good that way. Goldman Sachs coming into earnings here in the next two weeks, uh, going through its 5 million share high of April 12th at 209.97. Uh, got through that yesterday with uh, 3.7 million shares. Today up on 14, or one, yeah, no, 1. 1.4 million shares. Yesterday was 3.6 million shares. So again, uh, breaking out, no sign of strength. Um, these things can hang out for a few days. But generally, the problem with uh, playing these is uh, you got to just sit on your hands if you get short uh, for these things to pull back in. I am not one that will short Goldman Sachs or uh, the rest of the cabal of evil on Wall Street, mostly because they have their own trading floor. If you short them, they know right away they do everything in the world to put out fake articles and everything else uh, to run anybody that's short their stock out of it. It is an incredibly tough stock to short. There may be a lot of signals trying to get you to do that. I just think that there's greener pass uh, uh, pastures elsewhere to go after uh, these stocks, and I leave them alone, mostly because they know all the tricks and they pull them all. Uh, to, 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 um, Lockheed Martin, since this last gap up, has been moving fire. Last two days, starting to see kind of a crest in that. I think, uh, of course, Iran, Iran doing a lot of the saber rattling has moved this stock up. But, uh, got what? One, two, three, four, five, six days of sideways so far in Lockheed Martin. Watch out for the pullback. It's generally flat at highs is distribution. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're taking a look at a few more of these, but get, I mean, this is about as close to uh, uh, nerve wracking at these highs with no juice. Um, uh, take a look at SBLK. Um, this is Star Bulk Carriers. A uh, lot of these uh, bulk carriers have been moving up over the past, but the last four or five days, the volume is significantly. Uh, dropped off uh, so I think that maybe they've gone a little bit to over the tip of the skis uh, for thinking a trade deal is becoming imminent uh, but I do not see that anyway uh, uh, you had some volume back on the fifth uh, but the last few days this thing's really done nothing but go sideways at about ten and a half um, I think we're probably going to see some action in these uh, bulk carriers next week and that may tell you more about trade deals happening uh, than not happening in the near future. And let's see if there's anything else. Someone wanted me to look at uh, Microsoft. Microsoft uh, had a, a nice announcement um, about uh, what they were doing with the Microsoft Teams uh, versus uh, Slack. And uh, to, 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 we talked about this when it first came out, uh, which is a symbol as work. Uh, Microsoft actually said yesterday that they had 2 million more users on Microsoft Teams than there were for Slack. Uh, Slack's still in its quiet period, so they cannot respond. Um, but I wanted to see how, if anything, yeah, I figured it would be down a little bit. There isn't a lot of volume, but there isn't a lot of shares in this stock, so I'm not too surprised. The question is, uh, did they push this out just in time to make and get some cash in? Uh, and, of course, a lot of other people are debating the exact same question that LinkedIn had, and that is, can you survive by yourself anymore uh, going up against Facebook or uh, Google or the rest? Is their size and scale uh, basically a monopoly in a market? Um, capitalism is great. We found one mistake, and that is just like, playing Monopoly, eventually one person can end up with all the money. Uh, so we have Monopoly and antitrust laws to fix the one real big problem uh, with uh, capitalism. Uh, but certainly uh, this broke lower. I don't think that anything's going to happen soon. And of course, uh, during quiet period, they can't really even defend themselves if there is something to defend themselves against. Uh, but we brought this up when this stock came out that it was problematic at, at the best. And another uh, teachable moment, and that is, it doesn't matter how much I love the company, the stock doesn't always represent the company, right? It may be a wonderful product that no one buys, or it may be a wonderful product that no one is willing to spend money on. Uh, and the question is, what if Google uh, didn't do anything with your searches uh, dis did it for free, but you had to pay a dime for each search. Would you do that? Would After paying nothing for it, would you ever pay anything for it? That is the problem with, with uh, Slack in that they've been kind of doing it for free for a long time. 
And uh, the question is, will it monetize? Uh, there used to be a late night host that did a thing called, will it float? And they'd throw something in a pool. Well, maybe it'll float, maybe it won't. Uh, well, the question is, you don't really know. And maybe they went public just so someone would have to buy them out at a higher price. Uh, that would give them enough cash to hang around a couple of years to go after it, but uh, not looking good today. Uh, to, to do, what else do we have? Okay. Got a few other things. Salt. A lot of these stocks in my list are all in these bulk shippers, uh, and uh, they're still a little higher, uh, but certainly looks ever, like everybody's front-running uh, trade deals and have been for the last week or 10 days. Uh, but these things are looking, especially like today, uh, some dojis out there with not much in the way of volume uh, always make you want to go, hmm, hmm. Uh, a, a IPO for a couple of years ago continues to run. That is Shake Shack. Looks like awful close to finishing an ABC on the way back up. Uh, it pulled back from 6702 on May 3rd in two days back to $56.63 and started its move once again back higher. Still no signal that it's over, but uh, I don't see a lot left in the tank here. Just infantile uh, volume. Uh, that we see. Uh, Oracle got uh, kind of some bad news, uh, lost a lawsuit. I wrote a little bit about that in the Tech Insider, which you can go to the front page of TFNN and subscribe to. So once a week, fairly inexpensive, uh, but it'll keep you up to date and have some fairly good trades. In fact, we took some good money off the table uh, this week uh, for a nice trade. From what, uh, 38 bucks to 49 on one? So, uh, mm. nice. Uh, anyway, a lot of these stocks, like we're saying, any close below some of these uh, moving average, and you can have some fairly quick pullbacks uh, to support and resistance levels. Uh, in this case, there's a big gap from 53 to 56 from Oracle. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see that get back to 55 bucks for expiration next week. Seems to be one. Uh, question coming in about restoration hardware. Um, no signal quite yet, but close. Still no cigar. I would like to see at least 128 on that to pull the trigger. And I love a lot more for it to get to 130 and get rid of a lot of the uh, too easy shorts in this in the market. Schlumberger, which I think earnings coming up in a week or two. Um, up to 42 bucks, and that is a fairly decent uh, retracement level. Uh, to, to although you're going to get a little bit more out here, and that's uh, this confluence range that starts at about 43 and a half bucks. Um, energy, eh, it's off and on out here, uh, but I think if you were in this long uh, from 34 or 46, which is the low on May 31st, or somewhere around there. Uh, your target would have to be $43.37, where you would have to say, Amscray Attenlay. No, I did that. Royal Gold. Did we look at this one already? Yeah. No, oh, no, we didn't. We looked at another one, Gold. Uh, same thing. No sign just yet. Uh, Royal Gold, uh, when it does pull back, pretty good indication that $95 is support on it from the 110. 25 it hit today. Uh, so as soon as you start seeing this weaken and set up for the next ABC, got a pretty good target on its back right there. To, 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 got SLB, got that. Do you have anything else? Got a question coming in on the email on XLF and what's going on on that. Well, certainly you're up uh, going against the previous high of May 1st. Uh, that had 68 million shares at $28.14. Uh, you got over it uh, on the uh, on July 5th. You're back up here today with the uh, 16 million shares going after the 68 million share high. And of course, you just got 40 million shares on the 5th going on into that May 1st high. So not a lot of juice back up here at these highs. So uh, a little bit higher or a whole lot lower. Point. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And had a uh, email to take a look at the FANG stocks just before we leave. Uh, NFLX. Take a quick look. Um, do I see anything there? I mean, this one, as we said, you want to watch these when they close below. And you certainly got a decent close below on Netflix already. Um, it doesn't have that pattern that I'm looking for, but it does uh, show you that it's probably in some weakness and it'll stay underneath that three by three displaced moving average for a little while or a nine day moving average, whatever you want. Um, again, I think this one has, has and is showing with both volume and its business model that it's spending a ton and getting less for content. Uh, they will also be losing some of the bigger shoes uh, come 2020. And I think we talked a little bit about that earlier. Uh, 3009 is the S&P as we speak, so it's up nine points. Uh, volume is uh, ghost town. We don't even have, uh, going into 3 o'clock, um, 4 billion shares yet. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is weak. Uh, 3.7 billion shares. So this could be the lowest of volume full a day in a couple of years. So very, very quiet uh, and not a lot of reason to push other than the fact that we are going to earnings season. So we'll see what happens on Monday. I don't expect that a lot is going to happen. 
uh, in the news other than uh, uh, our friends out there in New Orleans who are already flooded. Uh, but I guess if you live uh, 10 or 20 feet below sea level, you got to kind of expect it. Uh, certainly not in a place uh, like a tall mountain uh, where you're going to find uh, Noah's Ark one day. Uh, but uh, certainly there. Anyway, we're back up to highs. There has been no volume. We've got a little bit of short covering into the end. And this is uh, where you have to have the faith if you're going to be short. That is looking down the barrel of a gun. You've got one. And you pull the trigger, shoot back. We'll see you Monday, same bat channel, same bat time. And uh, yeah. so when you can, out with you.